Hey up everybody, uh, right then today I'm up Miller Machine and I'm going to make a single point gear cutting tool. Uh, why do I need that then? Because a couple of videos back if you saw me, you saw me video I mentioned that I'd lost one of my gears for cutting metric threads on me on my Myford Imperial lathe. So by using one gear at a time, by having two gears and using one at a time you can get most metric threads and I did that in another video. So if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, take a look back at me, me previous, one of my previous videos, not long back, on cutting metric threads in an imperial lathe without a full set of change wheels. So I did look for a cutter to do this particular job but for some reason I can't find a 20 dp 14 and a half degree pr pressure angle uh, gear cutter. I can get one in a full set from China but I don't want to go to the expense of buying a full set when I'll never ever use them. They come in a set of one to eight gears. Um, all the hobby suppliers on, on the internet that supply gear cutters, for some reason this 20 dp 14 and a half pressure angle seems to be always missing. Now my conspiracy theory is here is they must sell full metric change wheels for my fids um, and they don't want you to make these two uh, gears that find the way round find a way round having to not buy the full set. Well that's my theory and I'm sticking by it. Anyway going back to this single point cutter now I know what you're saying it's probably it's not going to be accurate well it's not going to be 100% accurate no but because uh, where this mesh is on the gear train the banjo comes up to it with, a, with another gear that it meshes to it so that's why it's not super critical. So in a couple of videos back then I shown where I made this adapter to fit to my milling head for my, well it's actually my woodworking router with a grinding wheel in. I shown you how I made that to do this job. So I'm going to move over to workbench then and I'll explain what I'm doing then we'll come back over to Miller and I'll show you how I've cut this, how I'm going to cut this tool. And then perhaps in next video, I'll show you how I use that tool to cut a 34 tooth wheel. Right, I'm over at workbench and I'm going to cut a very long story short because gear cutting is a subject that's very, very involved. And for me to explain it in this quick, well when I say quick, in this video, it's, uh, it's a non-starter really. So if you're interested in doing gear cutting, get that book by Ivan Law. I've got that book, but this isn't it, because I've, lo I've loaned it to somebody. But this is another book by Alfred Marshall, and you can see how old it is. It's, still, it's got six shillings on, that's pre-decimalisation in, in UK. So it's pre-1971. And this is a good book, just like Ivan Laws is. And it gives you all the information you need to know about gear cutting. But just, just quickly, there's hundreds of different types of gear cutter that you can get they come in they quoted as CP DP and module the module versions are the metric versions the metric equivalents to the DP which is diametral pitch and then in each of those DPs that DPs modules CPs which you can get um, there's a one to eight range of cutters in each of those individual DPs or modules. So for instance a number one cutter to a number eight cutter cuts varied amounts of teeth on a gear and you have to choose a cutter that's going to be relevant to your DP pressure angle and teeth. So I'm, I'm going to need a number four cutter or I would do if I were buying one which will cut 26 to 20 to 34 teeth. Uh, I'd want 20 dp, 14 and a half degree pressure angle. Right, so I'm going to make a single point cutter to match that 
gear cutter. So how I'm going to do that then, I've got a gear that's near to the size that I want, that, that falls within the range uh, that, that I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut a 34 and a 33. So I've chose a 30 to which I've already got. Now that will give me my profile that I need because it's within that range. Number 4, 26 to 34 teeth. So what I've done then, I've carefully measured the teeth on this gear and I've um, I've, drew, I've drawn it all out, I've measured the top of the tooth, the bottom of the tooth, the depth of the tooth etc. And then I've also, as near as damn it, measured the radius of the tooth form. Now, it's not actually a radius as such, well not actually a true radius, but by doing it this way it'll be for, for my application it will be near enough because an involute tooth isn't actually a true radius all the way around like that but it's going to be near enough for what I want how I'm going to do that then is I'm going to do it in my milling machine using a grinding wheel that's of the correct radius so I'm looking for a half inch diameter grindstone. You will need a magnifying glass to check all this because you need to be as close as you, as you can to that tooth form. I'm, I've, I'm over on my Myford lathe now making a grindstone of half inch diameter. So I'll move over to my Myford and show you how I'm going to cut a, a grindstone to get the correct uh, form that I want and when I've, when I've done the grindstone it will give me a form which is very similar to an involute gear cutter perhaps noticed I've got me, me Myford all covered up with uh, blankets, cloths cardboard and tape so I don't get any grinding dust into the workings of my lathe. So I'll see you over at Myford. Over at Myford, now you can get these grindstones, these cheapest chips, all various different sizes in a pack. Um, they probably only cost the pennies each but they never ever run true. Now to put them in your drill or anything like that where they're not running too fast, they're fine. But when you've got them on a on a grinder, or in my case my router, that's running at 27,000 RPM, if they're not actually bang on running true, everything starts uh, running out of balance. So best thing to do is to trim them up. And how, how, how I do it, I've got a diamond single point diamond uh, grindstone uh, dresser and I put, it in, I put the wheel into my lathe and I just drill them up before I use them. In this particular case I've got to get it down to half inch diameter. Uh, this is the nearest one to it and I've, I think it wants approximately 30 thousandths off the diameter and that 30 thousand should just true, true it up enough for it to be running okay in my in my grinding attachment now I've got my lathe covered up as you can see here because you don't want grinding dust to go in chuck or to go in any of your bearings or any, any of your slides so you've got to make sure everything's covered up I mean it's not an ideal application this but you know if, if that's all you've got that's what you've got to use um, just make sure everything's covered and uh, I'll start laying up you'll see that this grindstone's running a little bit out I can't get to my controls right here we are so you can see it's, it's quite consider considerably amount running out so 
of Majiri Chokwa Mivernia in his 34,000s taking off and I think that will just get me cleaned up to the diameter that I want so I'm going to run my lathe at the fastest speed I'm going to make sure everything's covered up and make sure nothing can get trapped in chuck while you're doing this and I'm just going to touch it on touch this uh, diamond dresser on and trill the wheel up down to that size I've got it down to half inch diameter now. Uh, I've just moved my compound slide over. I'm just going to trim this uh, rate this uh, angle up so it's running true, so it don't send me me uh, me router out of balance. Right, I must stress here that make sure that if you're doing this, make sure all your cover your covers are not going to catch hold anywhere onto your chuck you don't want them to start wrapping around your chuck it'll be dangerous uh, so you know safety first so I'm now ready for putting that in milling machine and making the tool I'm over on my, my uh, bench grinders and I'm just going to get a piece of tool steel of a suitable width and size, in, in this case this is 5 sixteenths tool steel I'm just going to rough the shape out uh, on freehand on my bench grinder till I get it roughly down to that shape then once I've got it to the rough shape that I want I'm going to put this into my milling machine with that grinding with that grinding stone I've just uh, dressed up and then that will take it down to that correct form right I've set the tool up in the chuck of the dividing head and I'm using a, a simple tool holder and the reason I've done that is so I can come away from the chuck a little bit so uh, me, me wheel's not interfering with the chuck jaws. I've set the tool level and I've just eyeballed it level with the parallel. I've set me dividing head uh, onto, onto a full hole. So what I'm going to do then, I've, I've got the tip of the tool on the centre line of the grindings on the grindstone and I'm on this side of the tool now, on the opposite side to what you're looking at right so before I start to cut I want to put some clearance on that tool and to do that so I've just moved my dividing head over uh, seven and a half degrees so the tool's actually tilting now off the horizontal plane in that direction and I'm cutting on the opposite side to what you're looking at then once I've got that, um, once I've got that cut and it's uh, machining it all the way through, and I've got my clearance, I want to come over to this side and do the same, and just keep alternating on the sides till I get the point of my tool to that measurement, and then I can try this uh, 30 tooth gear wheel onto the tooth, uh, and once I'm happy with that profile, that's it, job done.
that's my tool cut then to the desired shape. Um, I'll uh, in the next video I'll show you how I, how I cut the gear and how I determined to get how to get the OD of the gear and the depth of the cut etc. So that's it for this video. Then if, if that's been useful to you, give me a subscribe and a and a like and uh, I'll catch you on my next video. So thanks for watching then. Bye for now.